Hi, I'm a duck named Steve. Yeah, I got my name from my call scamming days and it just kind of stuck, so I'll leave it alone. Anyways, welcome to my channel. I'm picking up my review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I left this dumpster fire right after Poe's first interaction with Admiral Holdo, where she basically tells him it's a good idea to commit mutiny. But whatever, let's go. We pick up with Finn packing it shit and tucking his tail to run like a little bitch when he's confronted by Rose. Okay, lots going on here. In The Force Awakens, Finn is introduced as a character that was pushed to his breaking point. He had enough of the First Order, escaped with Poe Dameron, who was being held captive at the time. Finn develops significantly during that movie, from initially wanting to run all the time, afraid of his own shadow, to facing his fear and standing his ground, culminating with him and Rey fighting Kylo Ren. Now, while Finn is defeated relatively easily, he shows how much he's grown and proves that over time, he should be one heck of a force to be reckoned with later on in the franchise. But in this movie, he regresses. Everything he developed in the first movie is completely wiped out. The scene with him trying to run literally reminds me of a scene from a movie in the 90s. Report live for black TV. White folks are dead. We're getting the f*** out of here. I hate this movie. So while Finn is trying to abandon ship, he's confronted by Rose, who's a maintenance tech, acting like a security guard slash janitor slash I have no idea what she's supposed to be. Anyways, Finn tries to pull off some smooth operator bullshit, and she tases his ass, knocking him out cold. Finn wakes up with the hobbit Rose loading him onto some sort of cart, wheeling him down the hallway or to the brig or whatever, when Finn explains to Rose how the First Order is tracking the resistance through hyperspace. And Rose, who's a maintenance tech, you know, that goes around replacing light bulbs, all of a sudden has a brain fart and says, oh geez, I think I have this figured out. So the two resistance fighters go back and forth with some sort of deductive reasoning. They pontificate hypothesis, and with their genius scientific exploration into each other's experiences, the two janitors, the coward and the hobbit, figure out what no one else in the resistance is able to piece together. They unlock not only how the First Order is tracking them, but how to disable the tracker within the First Order capital ship. Man, these guys are f***ing impressive. Goodwill hunting, eat your heart out. And there's no one that's f***ing smart on any of these ships that can't figure this out. Oh, it's them. It's these two f***ing morons. I mean, at this point, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's just replace all the command staff with the custodian staff and the resistance. Are you a cook? Congratulations. Now you're a captain. Maid? No. Master chief. Garbage man? No, now you're a gunner's mate. Yeah, this is stupid because the writing is completely bullshit. It would have made more sense to have Rose hiding her tears over her recent loss, taking a break from her role as, say, a science officer because she was embarrassed and didn't want the people that reported to her seeing her in such an emotional state. So she decides to hide in the life pod. No one should be there, right? And all of a sudden, Finn walks in on her while he's trying to escape. He sees her, recognizing that she's in pain, and instantly feels regret what he was trying to do, and does an about face. And he says, whoa, hold on a second, guys. What I'm doing is wrong. And look at this person. This person has suffered a significant loss. What am I doing? I'm being selfish. Let me refocus on what I am and who I am and how I can help the resistance. And there, I just fixed your whole god story. But instead, no. Finn just is like, bah, 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 I need to run, I need to run. I need to run. A little whiny little bitch. So instead, we have the two cleaners approach Poe Dameron about what they figured out. Somehow, amazing, isn't it? And they realize they need to get on the First Order ship to shut down the tracker so the Resistance can escape. Hey, that makes sense. Who's Poe gonna call? You remember Maz from the first movie? Yep, here we go. She's back. Kind of sassy and funny at the same time. Maybe we'll finally hear that story she was going to tell us about the lightsaber and what? No, she's too fucking busy with work. Wait, lives are at stake here. The future of the Resistance is at stake. The galaxy is at stake. And she can't be bothered because she's dealing with a union dispute for crying out loud throw in a god dental plan and let's go but no she's gonna hand you off to some sort of master code breaker that boinged her once and he's someone you never met know nothing about but are going to bet your entire future on gee this writing sounds fantastic what could go wrong i mean is this not the dumbest thing you've ever heard of it's like you have a heart problem and you ask your cardiologist, hey, can you please perform surgery on me? And he says, no, I've got a tea time, but you know, I banged this chick and she's going to be great for you. That qualifies, right? Does this example sound stupid? Yeah, well, so does this movie. We then jump to Rey waking up to start her Jedi training at dawn, which apparently on this planet looks more like 1030 in the morning. Yeah, knowing Luke, he's probably hung over at this point, so whatever. So as she's getting up, she's somehow connecting to Kylo Ren for a little, I, I don't know what. Don't know how they're connecting, but I'm reviewing this movie in 2022, so I'm assuming it's some sort of force Skype. I'll leave it at that. So Ray does her lesson with Luke, and she immediately goes to the dark side, and Luke nearly <laughs> his pants. Lesson learned. Women make Luke <laughs> his pants. Now we have Finn and Rose heading out to find the Master Breaker, and go to this planet that looks like something like the Bellagio. So let's call this place 
Space Vegas. That sounds good. Finn gets excited about shiny keys and Rose wants to go eat the rich when they discover the masturbator. Before they can get his attention, they get arrested because apparently people coming directly from a battle and parking a handicapped spot aren't welcome in Space Vegas. The cops even say they're getting arrested for a fucking parking violation. Gotta admit, that's a new one to me. Welcome to Space Vegas! We cut back to Ray looking like a complete idiot with a staff and then she decides to pull out the lightsaber and look like a bigger idiot. What does this scene serve? It's not training. She's just destroying public property. Whatever, lesson two. Luke is an idiot. He shits on Obi-Wan, the Jedi who initially trained him, then complains about Ben Solo. Now Ben Solo was being seduced by the dark side. First thing that went through my mind is, wait, what, you Luke Skywalker? In your journey, you literally surrendered to the Empire to be brought before Darth Sidious in the last ditch attempt to save your dad that you barely knew, but because you believed in yourself, the force, the power of good, it would turn him back to the light. Now your nephew that you've known since birth have been training him for months, if not years, you discover is heading down the wrong path. So rather than aggressively intervene and work with him to turn him back to the light, your response is to confront with the intent of doing what? Cutting his head off? I mean, have the writers even seen the first three movies? This is such a horrible way to write Luke. I know where I covered this in part one, but f*** you, Mark Hamill, for going along with it. I normally wouldn't cover small status update scenes, but watching the medical frigate running out of space gas and being ultimately destroyed, I was curious as to why the captain was still on the ship. I know, I know, I know. Captains normally go down with their ship, but that's normally if people are still on board. So if everyone's off, why is he still there? Do they not have an autopilot? You just have a stupid droid there just, you know, kind of aiming the ship in the right direction. It runs out of space gas anyway, and apparently it tilts back because of it. I really think this guy had a death wish for some reason, and we'll never know why. But you know, knowing Disney, they'll probably create a whole new series around this guy. Actually, let me take a stab at it. Bob Parker, who was captain of the medical frigate in The Last Jedi, had a death wish years before when his family was killed by the First Order. Bob vowed no mercy for those guilty and vowed to avenge their deaths. Years later, when he found those that were responsible, Bob captured them alive and promised a slow death in the cargo area of his medical frigate. But things changed when the resistance was ambushed. However, Bob was still going to honor his promise, take the people that did him wrong straight to hell. Actually, it sounds like a great storyline. Okay, back to Space Vegas. Rose and Finn are in jail, and I like how Rose has a device that, like, shows the gas on the cruiser. It's like, wait, does that not, like, do anything else? Can you, like, make a call? Check the time? Check your heartbeat? I mean, anything else? It's just literally just checks the gas on a cruiser. It's just stupid. So they're sitting there in their cell, bitching about not finding the master breaker when Benicio Del Toro volunteers for the job. Hey, there you go. Wait, what the hell's wrong with him? Seriously, what's wrong with him? Well, he, he does help Finn and Rose escape, and and... At this point, I could talk about the, the space donkey scene, but why bother? It's a solid five minutes of sh so there I covered it. In the next scene, Luke rejoins the Force. There you go, that's good. And Ray has another Force Skype call, which is bad. Hey, Adam Driver, do you even lift, bro? What the hell? Bruh. So Ray puts Kylo Ren on call waiting and goes down to the dark side glory hole or whatever the f*** ah. is. She looks in the mirror and discovers she could snap her fingers. Good for you, you idiot. She then wishes to see her parents. Christ, this girl ah. is more about losing her parents than Harry Potter. Ugh. Enough already. Anyways, picking up the call with Kylo Ren, Luke sees how much uh, Ray's long distance call is costing him and immediately cuts the connection. Ray gets so mad that she throws a temper tantrum and beats up Luke. We say elderly abuse. Man, I didn't think this guy could become a bigger loser. Then to top it off, Yoda decides to show up, not sure why before, but now, and then decides to start fires. I mean, it would have been great for uh, Ray to see Yoda, be Master Yoda. Christ, what a good connection that she could make. As somebody that really relates to the other movies, my gosh, it transcends the whole damn generation and the whole part of Star Wars. You can see someone, he's like, Yoda, you're from the beginning. I know you, Yoda. You're the most important damn character in this whole series. Why were you not there from the beginning? But no, he shows up after them because he's So at this point, Finn and Rose are headed back to the resistance with the discount masturbator and Benicio Slow Toro to give them some sort of lecture about how money is bad or something. I, I swear this movie has so many useless points that I've lost count. Number one, money is bad. Okay, we get that. Two, Yodo is a pyro. All right, I think we kind of established that. Three, Luke is a loser. Oh, well, well, that's pretty self-apparent. Four, Ray complains more than someone who can't use their Kohl's cash. Five, Kylo Ren skipped leg day. Enough! Now, we're finally getting to the third act. Ray goes to see Kylo Ren, just like Luke went to go see his father. Wait, well, that's the best they can come up with? Didn't that happen in the third movie versus the second movie? <sighs> okay, fine. Rose and Finn are sneaking on the Snoke ship as well. Hey, <laughs> what are the chances? And Poe starts a mutiny that Admiral Holdo practically condoned earlier in the movie. How are all these adventures going to end? 
I didn't even need to see what happens next, I know, based on this crappy writing. Finn and Rose get caught, but you know what? We bring back Shiny Stormtrooper, yay, from the first one! The mutiny ended just as flaccid as it began, and Kylo Ren turns Rey over to Snoke! Boring! One bright spot is the scene where Snoke interrogates Rey. Now this is quality entertainment. It definitely has that SNM slash Fifty Shades of Grey vibe going on. Snoke just drags Rey closer, and when she withholds information from him, gives her the goods by turning her around and blows her mind with one of the biggest poon monsoons that I have ever seen. Damn, damn, that boy's got some skills. I'm definitely a little jealous. Up next, we find that Admiral Holdo did have a plan this whole time. The Resistance cruiser was to act as a decoy while the Resistance itself escapes to the nearby mineral planet Crate that has an old abandoned rebel base that's heavily armored with enough power to get a signal out to their allies. Okay, we need to stop here for a minute. This is almost like you took two completely different movies and smashed them together. Who believes this shit? <laughs> You have a desperate resistance, potentially in their final hours of life trying to come up with some sort of Hail Mary, and no one seems to look at a life-supporting planet just to the right? When Poe is talking to Leia on the transport, you can see this enormous f***ing planet out the window, and you're telling me that not one single person in the First Order turned their body 30 degrees to the right and thought, I wonder if they'll head for that planet? This implies that everyone that is part of the First Order suffers from such a severe level of mental retardation, including the resistance that I now realize I want everyone in this movie to die. Supernova these motherfuckers and let's start over. But no, there is still more dumb bulk to come. With Finn and Rose being captured, they are brought before General Hux. And oh yeah, shiny stormtrooper who also has a shiny gun too. Isn't that stupid? Hux walks up to Finn and gives him the weakest little limp-wristed slap. Well, I guess it's because he's retarded. We established that already with the First Order. You know, I don't want to be offensive, so I'll, I'll try to use more appropriate terms. The mentally handicapped General Hux cut a deal with Discount Masturbator, and now they're going to be executed, but wait, 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 pothole, pothole, pothole! The Masturbator tells Hux all about this plot of sending the transports down to the planet, but how would the f*** would Finn and Rose know about that? They're trying to disable the tracker so that the cruiser could get away in light speed. How would they know? And don't tell me that Finn leaked the plan to him. Finn was unconscious the entire time! Holdo's plan was kept to herself. No one else knew about it. The plan, as far as they know, was to turn off the tracker. The resistance escapes via hyperspace. No one said anything about loading people onto transports and then secretly sneaking them down to this planet. So this masturbator, code breaker, Benicio Slow Toro doesn't know anything. So the whole notion that he's telling them, they should just be shocked and sit there and go, what are you talking about? That's not the plan. He says, we got to run a decloaking scan. What do you mean? Whatever would make you think to do that? There's there's nothing in the storyline that connects the two. There is no connection point. This is bad writing. I need a drink. And with that, I'm going to wrap up part two. Make sure you stick around and check out part three. Trust me, there are still more stupid things to come. If what you saw here made you happy, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you didn't like what you saw here, please hit the like and subscribe button because it'd make me happy. Thanks for watching. Mahalo.